Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to look at expenses you've incurred before you've started out in business and also what to do when you've got that first VAT return and you want to claim for stuff that is post and pre that date as well. Let's see what QuickBooks can do for us to make our life really easy in that respect. Yeah, I told him I can be a fighter if you want. I'll be there to catch you if you fall. I can make it brighter when it's dark. When it's dark. I told him I would do it all for you. And I know you do it for me. Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Aaron Patrick. I'm a chartered accountant, certified UK trainer, and also that QuickBooks chat. Now, when you first start in business, there's going to be some expenses you incur before you actually start out and have a bank account and everything else. So first of all, how do we account for those expenses? And then what about the point where you become VAT registered and you need to start thinking about VAT before the date in the period that you are first VAT registered for? So we're talking about pre-incorporation expenses or pre-VAT expenses. Let's look at QuickBooks and let's see how it can deal with that. So first of all, I'm signed in and I'm about to jump into a client for the first time. I've got this pre-expense. Being my first time, I've got to make sure I set everything up. Now, first of all, I don't have a bank account or anything to include on here. I've only just set up my company, so I'm not going to have anything to go in and start recording from the bank itself. So how do I bring in transactions that I've incurred that are for the business, but it's just I've had to use my own funds to actually deal with that well what we always recommend here and if you see the channel you'll know we do this quite a lot is we always recommend that you go in and create a brand new account called director's loan or current account make sure it's a cash at bank in hand and make sure you use it as a cash on hand account now it's not technically that it's technically a current asset or current liability but if we use it as a cash on hand then this is what we get the advantage of. That means that it appears on our dashboard so we can see what balance it is at any point. And it also means we can interact with it really easily. So for example, if I want to put some extra expenses in, I can jump into suppliers, jump into expense, and the key is I'm gonna make sure my payment account, just here, is my director's loan account. That's effectively saying I've paid for it out of my own personal fees. So if I've gone to PC World and this was post actually starting my company, so I'm just gonna put the date, whatever the date relates to, I can put my attachment in as well. Then I'm gonna have some new computer equipment. And let's say it cost me 1,500 pounds. Save and close. Well, what's happened there is on my actual account, if I bring up my account, I look at my balance sheet, I now have a new computer edition sat just here, £1,500, but crucially on my dashboard, I now have a director's loan account saying that I am owed £1,500 from the business. What about other transactions? Well, I can deal with them the same way. Expenses. Again, director's loan account. If I've got lots of different things and it's my personal stuff I want to introduce in, then I can just put my own name. And I can class this as personal items sold at market value to business. And then I'm going to have iPad. Let's say £500. Again, I'm just going to put it to computer editions for this one. Uh, maybe I've got another thing that I've got. Personal items sold to business. And then this time around, I'm going to say it's my... MacBook. Um, maybe there's another one I want to put in there. Monitor. And I could just keep adding to here. And all I'm doing is I'm affecting that director's loan account. So save and close. So I'm starting to build up all my expenses that I've got in there. I'm starting to put them into QuickBooks nice and easily for me. So what else can I put in there? Well, when it comes to your pre-expenses, it's anything that relates to you. Now notice on if it's something from an actual transaction. So if I've gone from PC World, then I'll have that receipt and I'll put it in there. If it's me personally putting money into the business or in this case, putting assets into the business, 
and I just need to have a market value that is actually worthwhile for me to put in there. I want to make sure I get that market value just right. Once I'm happy with that, I can keep adding as many expenses in there if I need to. And I can keep adding those transactions into QuickBox. Now, the other thing that pops up is, well, what if you want to put some transactions in there and you weren't that registered, but then you become that registered and it's an item that you can claim for? Well, that's really straightforward. So if you jump into your taxes section, and when you're first setting up VAT, let's set it up. Now imagine my first period for my VAT is the first of the 12th. So those items I brought in in November, they're not going to appear there, but that's not a problem. What I wanna do, and this is really important, is I want that first period to actually just be a broken period, a period where it's just gonna be one particular date, and you'll see why. So I want to start collating my information from, and I'm going to say December in this case, but I want mine to be quarterly. I'm going to put a VAT registration in now, and I'm going to press next. But crucially though, it's all down to that first period. So now I've generated that VAT. But remember what happens if I put in a period that relates prior to that. And I want that period to be the following. So I'm going to prepare my first return. And I've not turned on MTD at this point, and I'm actually going to put this as the first of the of the first 2019 all the way up to my last day. So in this case my 30th of the 11th 19. Now at this point there's zero there and I don't want anything to be there because I don't want anything to be in this particular period. This is a period we're never going to actually file. But I'm going to put as mark as filed. When you mark anything as filed within QuickBooks, what happens is you get this, this page. This will mark your return as filed and close the books for this period. Transactions from this period are then changed later will show up in the VAT exception report. And that's the key bit. We want items in our VAT exception report. Because the items we want in our VAT exception report in the next return we do we want them to be all of those pre-registered items. So when I press continue, I've now marked and filed that period and every transaction that was in bought in that period has now got a stamp on to say it was filed, quote unquote, we not actually filed it, but we're gonna tell QuickBooks we have. We're filed with no VAT against them. Then look what happens. If I jump into any of those transactions, now these pre expenses that I've put in at market value. I can't really claim the VAT back of them because I can't prove what the VAT was. But anything that we bought where we still have our VAT receipt for, all I need to do is go in, edit, and say that actually this had VAT on it. And we're gonna say it's inclusive of VAT, and it was 20%. And hopefully I've got an attachment down here that's gonna prove that that was absolutely spot on. So now what I do is I press save, and I go taxes. When I jump in that next return, notice how I have what's called an exceptions report here. And this exceptions report is going to be all those pre-registered assets or, or items that you are eligible to claim. And that's going to be all your pre-registered expenses all in there. And that's what you want to be looking at. You want them to be separate from your standard column here because that's going to be your first quarter. In this case, first of the 12th to the 28th of the second. In there, I want to see all the input VAT and output VAT I incurred in that quarter, where my exceptions report are going to be all the adjustments I've made to the previous period, pre-registered expenses. That's the important thing. That's what we want in there. So as you can see, using that method of just closing off a period beforehand, and in this case, I just did two just to get it nice and clean, both for each one, closing off that period first of all, makes it really easy and clean for you because you're stating that you paid zero VAT and zero was submitted at that point. Then when you go into the next period, it's going to pick up any adjustments you make. So once you've closed that period down, you can go into those items that you want to start claiming for, start putting them to the right VAT and they will automatically come in for you as an exception report. So there we have it. I hope you found that really useful because what we've done is we've been able to look into how to put pre-expenses into QuickBooks. And you can see it's actually quite a straightforward process. It's not too difficult for you to look at. So utilize that going forward. Look at the way where you have in that director's loan account, put them in in the date that they incur. It doesn't matter if they're pre when your first period's gonna be, they'll be brought through on your director's loan account. 
Now, the only time that will cause you any problems whatsoever is if it's your P&L. Your P&L itself is anything that's income or expenditure. If that's the case, then just put them in on the first day of your period and you'll be able to include them exactly how you need to. But as you can see, this process is you're putting them in exactly how you will. Just be mindful of the name and more importantly, be mindful of where you're posting them again. So in this case, director's loan account. What that would do is give you some budget to work with in your director's loan so you can take money out without having to incur any additional taxes or anything along them along the line. So with that, that's the end of this particular video. Hopefully that's been useful for you. If so, drop down below and let us know if there's any other questions or issues that you're having with QuickBooks and I'll be definitely looking to answer them for you. My name's Aaron Patrick, it's been a pleasure to do this video and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Cause I can get him out of my head I don't care what we do, everything's really new Even if we're staying bad My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah You know I want him na, 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 na My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah Hello and thank you for watching that video. What you may not know is this channel that you've watched this video from is part of a wider group. That wider group is called Apple Core Production. And the three channels that we have involved are as follows. Aaron Patrick, the QuickBooks Chat, Boffix Tax Tip. Finally, we have Apple Core Live and Geeky. All the links and everything are down below in the description, but it really mean a lot to us if you can go and give a like to the other channels as well.